A thrilling opening round of Super League has unfortunately been overshadowed by doping revelations from former Scotland captain Ollie Wilkes. Wilkes becomes the second former rugby league player in recent months to admit to using performance enhancing drugs during his playing days. Now, to get more on this story, I'm joined by Sky Sports Rugby League pundits John Wells and John Wilkin. Wellsy, thanks for your time today. First of all, what's your reaction to what Ollie Wilkes has said? Well, afternoon, Jenna. Um, th this is not a picture I recognise at all. I, I don't believe, as he stated, that he's rife in the game. Um, I've spent the last 25 years uh, in this game as a player, as a pundit and, a, and as an administrator. Um, and what is being peddled by Oliver Wilkes and, and Jamie Acton as well, it has to be said, for me, is, is a false narrative. And I'll give you a little, little bit of context for this. 2021, a UK had conducted over 600 tests uh, in, in rugby league and returned one positive for performance enhancing drugs. That was for the growth hormone releasing peptide. That was the retest uh, uh, of a 2014 sample for Jamie Acton, the one that kicked all this off. So 0.1%. Uh, is not rife for me. It's still uh, a false narrative, though, which threatens to cast a shadow uh, over some of the hardest working, most diligent, honest, and fundamentally, for the purpose of this conversation, clean athletes in, in professional world sport. So I'm going to choose to speak for them now, um, and I'll give you a little bit of an example. I was the director of rugby uh, at Castleford Tigers for, for three years, and during that time, working day in, day out with a, a group of players, never once had a, um, a, a single incident or a rumour of a single incident in the playing group or rumoured about other clubs uh, around Super League. No one, no one scarpered uh, when the UCAD test had turned up and they did so regularly. Every player was fully engaged with the education programme uh, that was uh, born in conjunction with UCAD and, and the RFL. And, and this, bear in mind, Jenna, was a playoff club, a top six club with plenty of international players who had the same pressures and stresses that Jamie Acton and Oliver Wilkes spoke about in their recent interviews as well. Um, what we've got here is two cheats. Let's be honest, two cheats who have threatened to undermine. What they've succeeded in doing is to torpedo their own reputation, threatened to undermine what has been an outstanding opening uh, weekend to the 20, uh, 2022 Super League season. Well, John Wilkin, I know you're also extremely passionate about this. You played against Ollie Wilkes. Did you ever see a noticeable and, and maybe sudden improvement in his physical condition or his performances? I think firstly, Jenna, what I'd like to say is, look, these guys have come out to talk about something and their experience, it's really personal and very political to them. And you credit them with coming out and wanting to talk about it. But in terms of Oliver Wilkes, look, I don't know how to put this in no uncertain terms. A lot of respect to the guy, but we never focused on him. He's not a player you would focus your attention on at all. Uh, Jamie Acton, same. You know, we, we certainly did not focus time and attention looking at these players and, and that to me feeds into what I'd like to say is that stories like this without context are just headlines. So the context I want to provide for this story is for four years I was part of the UK Anti-Doping Athlete Panel in which they get, gather you know sports people from all different sports you know uh, the Paralympics, the Olympic Games, boxers and, and, and all different sports and, and on my time in the, you know, when I was sat on this board at the UK anti doping, it made me realise something. There's only a finite number of tests. UK anti doping is obsessed with catching people who cheat and who win trophies. And that's probably where the loophole exists here. Because as John Wells referenced those stats, although that's correct, what we do is we focus a majority of the tests on the top athletes. And I went into those meetings arguing that that was the wrong way because all of the evidence suggests in sport, the lower down the competitions you go, the more rife cheating is. So I was saying we're fishing in the wrong pond here as a sport because all the evidence suggests cheating is happening at the lower levels. That being said, UK anti doping's answer blew my mind because they said, we're not fussed about that. We want to catch them, but we need to preserve the integrity of the sport. And if Kevin Sinfield is lifting a trophy, we need people to watch and know that he's drug free and done it with honour. And that's what happens. When you see somebody in Super League, in the top flight, do their stuff, in my experience, they do it with honour and they do it with hard work and it's clean. 
The problem we've got is that we're very closely attaching a semi-professional game with a professional game and the headline grabbing of Scottish international Oliver Wilkes and all of that is designed to make it create this, this feel, feeling of scale about an issue. There's undoubtedly an issue with drugs in sport, all sports. My wife was an Olympic swimmer. They have their own issues. But what we're talking about here is the equivalent of an athlete who didn't get close to making Team GB squad for London Olympics and tested positive for a drug and then making wide sort of claims that it is rife within a sport. Well, I don't know what the percentage of rife is, but it's certainly not rife within the sport. And I've never really experienced it or, or come across people who, who have cheated. Um, also with this, Jenna, look, where there's loopholes and where there's lack of scrutiny, cheating exists. If we look at look, the government's uh, COVID-19 fund would have undoubtedly been defrauded by people and cheats would have found a way to get money out of the government in this situation. And that's ultimately down to lack of scrutiny. Well, at the lower levels of rugby league, there's less scrutiny, more incentive to cheat, and that's where the bulk of cheating is happening in rugby league. It's certainly not happening at the top of the sport. Yeah, you mentioned Kevin Sinfield there. Obviously, we are not insinuating at all that Kevin Sinfield has done anything wrong. John Wilkin, just while we have you here, I mean, ITV News has spoken to, to current and former players who didn't recognise the picture that Wilkes has painted, but there are some who said it, it was ingrained within the culture. Do you recognise it at all? Well, firstly, let me just say the reason I mentioned Kevin Sinfield is because he was a clean and very honourable athlete who won things. It's important to say we're trying to maintain that integrity through the testing procedure. Look, you know, is this, a, is this a widespread issue? No. Two guys have come out with very personal examples of why they think there's a problem with drugs in rugby league. Now, we've got to listen to it and we need to understand the mental health position of these guys and actually the power of coming out and talking about it. But I don't recognise the picture they're paying, and I think it's damaging. You know, we've got two fantastic games on Sky Sports on Thursday night and Friday night this week. And for me, look, as somebody who loves the game, I don't want people watching our sport and lazily connecting it with this story and assuming that all of the athletes in these games are cheating. It's just not the position. And, and look, just to finish from me, look, I, I'd rather fail with honour than succeed you know, with cheating, and I think that's f some Greek philosophy. And it remains the same. To be excellent at rugby league, you've got to take your character, in fact, any sport, take yourself right back to the basis of your character, to bleed, to sweat, to put your body through so much pain, surgery, to come back. And if you can't get yourself to that point without taking drugs, then you're never going to succeed. And you won't succeed in any sport. So my question is, to, to the game, is, I mean, my suggestion is I don't think it's widespread. I think there's pockets of it happen, as in any sport. I think this has been sensationalised to be something that's bigger than what it is. And we should move on and talk about the fantastic entertainment we've got to come.